Hi, boys and girls. Um, we are on our third book. Uh, today is another Gil Gibson's book. It's called The Honey Makers. And I was looking through it earlier. And it's kind of cool because it kind of goes along with the science that we did this week. Uh, how do um, plants get pollinated? And uh, this one, the author's message for this one. So Gil Gibson wants us to know some animals work together in groups to survive. Animals and people and people often help each other. So while I'm reading this book today, I want you to be thinking about the focus question. It is, why do you think Gil Gibbons calls honeybees and beekeepers the honey makers? So while I'm reading this story, I want you to think about why is she calling honeybees and beekeepers the honey makers? It is springtime. Two beekeepers have placed a beehive on a hill. Activity begins around the hive. The honeybees and the beekeepers are dot, dot, dot. Here's the title page, the honey makers. Hmm. Honeybees travel to and from the hive. Their earliest ancestors lived about 80 million years ago. The scientific name for honeybee comes from the Latin word Apis mellifera meaning honey bearer. Honey bees are social creatures. They form highly structured groups called colonies. In a colony, as many as 50,000 or more bees live together and work at their own special jobs. There's a wild honey bee hive and a wooden bee hive. Many honey bees like to make their homes in dark enclosed places. Often a colony of wild honey bees builds its hive in a hollow tree. Honey bees cared for by today's beekeepers live in a box shaped wooden hives. Inside the beehive, the honey bees are building an amazing structure called a honeycomb. It is made up of countless six-sided cells. Stored in many of these wax cells is the food that the bees and people love to eat. Honey. How many of you like honey? I like honey and peanut butter together. That's my favorite. Three different kinds of honeybees live inside all beehives. There's one queen about 100 male drones, and thousands of female worker bees. Like all insects, bees have three body parts. There's the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Honey bees have other parts too. So there's a great diagram there. The queen is the largest of the honeybees and she can live the longest. From three to five years, all the other bees in the colony live for about two months, except over winter when they live a few months longer. It is the queen's job to make sure the hive never runs out of bees. To do this, she leaves the hive to mate with drones. Then she lays as many as 2,000 eggs a day. Drones are usually smaller than the queen. Their only job is to mate with her. Most cells in the beehive are used for storing honey, but some are used for the queen to lay her eggs. These are called broad cells. In each broad cell, a bee will develop and grow. The largest broad cells are queen broad cells, also called the royal cells. Drone broad cells are smaller. Even smaller are the worker broad cells. The egg in those cells will become worker bees. Although all worker bees are female, they do not lay eggs. Instead, they do the work of the beehive. Most eggs the queen lays are no bigger than the period at the end of the sentence. After three days, the larva hatches from each one. For the next three months, I'm sorry, for the next three days, worker bees called nurse bees feed the larva bee milk. 
Then they feed it bee bread. A queen larva is fed royal jelly throughout its growth. Each larva grows quickly. They spin a silky cocoon around itself. Inside the cocoon, the pupa develops. A nurse bee sells, seals the cell with wax. Little by little, the pupa changes. It begins to look more like an adult insect. This process is called metamorphosis. Queens develop in about 16 days from the time the eggs are laid. The metamorphosis of drones and workers take about 21 to 24 days. Finally, after the transformation is complete, an adult bee chews its way out of the broad cell, an adult honeybee. This honeybee is a worker bee. From the minute she comes out of her broad cell, she is as busy as a bee. For the next three weeks, she will have a number of different jobs to do inside the hive. First, she is a house bee, cleaning and polishing the cells. About three days later, she come, becomes a nurse bee. After 10 days of being a nurse bee, she becomes a wax making bee. She makes flakes of wax in her abdomen and chews them to mold new cells or repair old ones. Wax making bees are also in charge of storing the nectar and pollen that other honeybees bring back to the hive. Other workers care for the queen. They are her court. They cluster around the queen to continually feed and groom her. About a week later, the wax-making bee becomes a guard bee and begins its outdoor life. Guard bees protect the hive. They chase away intruders with their stingers. They also alert the other bees by spreading a special scent when there is danger. A guard bee will sometimes die in battle to protect the hive and its honey. The worker bee is now about three weeks old. She is ready to become a forager bee, her last job, but a very important one. A forager bees are the bees you see zipping from flower to flower. They collect sweet juices called nectar from the flowers for the honey making. At each flower, the forager bee collects nectar with her probus. She stores the nectar in a special part of her body called the crop or honey stomach. This stomach is separate from her other stomach. As she, grows from, as she goes from flower to flower, she comes in contact with a yellow powder called pollen. Some of the pollen is collected in little baskets formed by the special hairs on her hind legs. As the forager bee collects nectar, she carries pollen from flower to flower. This part of the process is called pollination. When she has visited many flowers, her crop is full. She beelines back to her hive. Back inside the hive, the forager bee brings up and regurgitates the nectar. Then she transfers it by tongue to a hive bee. The nectar is passed by tongue among the hive bees until some of its moisture is gone. Then a wax making bee places the nectar in a honey cell. There it continues to dry. More and more nectar is added to the honey cell. House bees cluster over the cell and fan their wings to evaporate more of the moisture in the nectar. As the nectar loses water, it becomes thicker and thicker. Finally, wax making bees cap or seal the cell with wax. Slowly, the nectar ripens into honey. When forager bees return their hive, they have a special way of telling the other forager bees of important discoveries, like a new location of flowers full of nectar and pollen. 
They do the dances of the bees. A forager honeybee can visit up to 10,000 flowers a day. All the nectar she collects in her entire life can make only about one teaspoon of honey. To make one pound of honey, it takes nectar from over one million flowers. Also, different kinds of honey come from different kinds of flowers. I've seen that before. I've been to um, busy farms and they have different honey there. Like the, I remember they had the blackberry honey that we bought. It was really good. Honeybees have always been valued for the honey they make. For thousands of years, people have stolen honey from wild beehives. People become beekeepers when they begin to make their own hives. Some use hollow logs. Others use clay pots. Later, in about 1500, European beekeepers started using upside-down basket hives called skeps. Then, in about 1850, the hanging movable frame beehive was invented. On top of the hill is a modern beehive. The beehive is stacked in sections, in each section hanging about 10 wooden frames where the bees build their honeycombs. To help the bees build their honeycombs faster, the beekeeper places wax foundations in the frames. It's time for the beekeepers to harvest the honey. The honeybees have had several months to build and fill the honeycombs. The colder the winter, the more food they will need. The beekeepers move slowly around the hive. They wear special clothes and use special equipment to protect themselves from getting stung. Back at home, in a shed, the beekeepers use a hot knife to cut the wax caps off the honeycomb. Then the honeycomb frame is placed inside an extractor. It spins around at a high speed to remove the honey without breaking the honeycomb. The honey goes into a collecting tank. Next, the honey is filtered through a screen and a cloth to remove small pieces of wax. Then the honey is packed in airtight jars. Sometimes beekeepers melt down old and damaged honeycombs to make beeswax candles and other things. The rest of the empty honeycomb frames are returned to the hive for the honey bees to fill again. For some beekeepers, honey making is a hobby. They use the honey themselves or give it away as gifts. Commercial beekeepers provide stores and shops with gleaming jars of their product to sell. Delicious sweet honey from the honey makers. That was an interesting one. It's kind of fun to read this right now with um, all the nice wet weather. I'm seeing a lot of bees flying around. Um, at my house, we actually have a lot of hornets. Uh, so we've been taking care of those, but the bees are pretty cool. So remember that Gail Gibbons, um, her, the author's message was some animals work together in groups to survive. Animals and people, people often help each other. And today's focus question, hopefully you were thinking about it, was why do you think Gail Gibson calls honeybees and beekeepers the honey makers? So you can always write that down if you wanted to and put it in Seesaw. Thank you very much. I will talk to you soon. We have one more book left in this series. Have a good day. Bye.